Hello everybody, I'm James Lovelock and uh, you probably know I'm a scientist and an inventor and have been working nearly all of my life. In fact I was uh, used to run as an independent, uh, running my own business from uh, all the age of about 40 to uh, 100. Uh, now I suppose I'm retired in on the uh, coastline of Dorset. Um, I think people, you, you in the um, longevity uh, business are interested in how I've made it to be 102 because I seem to have led a life that should have led short, been short, much shorter than that. Um, to start with, I grew up uh, from six years old till about 13, in Brixton, South London, where dense London smogs were perfectly normal in the winter time. And I think evidence has showed that they're pretty um, bad for your health. Um, the people don't, who live there don't live as long as... In fact, several people have been followed who moved from Brixton to New Zealand and their life expectancy shot up when they went got away from the heavily polluted areas. So, environment does have some effect on uh, how long you live, but it doesn't seem to have bothered me un unduly. And uh, there was a final dreadful smog in London, I think in the early 1940s, was it? No, not the 40s, 50s, uh, when... when uh, the whole city was absolutely smothered in foul coal smoke from coal burning fires and that killed off quite a few people that it's actually recorded. I, I lived through all of that and it doesn't seem to have had any particularly deleterious effect. I've had plenty of diseases, uh, so many that uh, um, two physicians, uh, consultant physicians at the, our nearby hospital, Dorchester Hospital, uh, uh, checked my DNA to see if uh, I was, there was anything unusual about my inheritance that favoured longevity. And uh, they came back with a startling conclusion that whereas nearly everybody else is descended via their mitochondria, from a woman called Eve, who lived about 20,000 years ago. I was not. I was descended from a woman called Ursula, who lived 40,000 plus years ago. And uh, th this suggested that genetic factors do come into longevity quite a bit. Maybe I'm resistant to things that other people are not so fortunate. <laughs>wanted to know how much climate change and uh, agriculture and things like that affected us. Well, it, I think it's quite important to recognise <coughs> that what, what I'm most known for is a theory of the earth called Gaia. It wasn't my name, it was the name was given by the author Richard, uh, Bill Golding who wrote Lord of the Flies and several other quite famous books. Um, uh, he suggested Gaia because what, what my idea was, was the Earth itself, the, the whole of the planet with, with all its life upon it, was a self-regulating system, almost like a living thing, um, that kept its climate and its composition constant uh, despite changes in the environment. And uh, this, I think, is important to our health because what we do, particularly when we burn fossil fuels, is a threat to the stability of this self-regulating system. And I think most people know that. It's, it's a bad thing to burn carbon fuels. It alters the composition of the atmosphere and this alters the climate and everything else. Uh, I think that's right, and absolutely, but everything I say today 
really comes from this theory of the Earth, uh, which I'm, I'm sorry to say an awful lot of scientists rejected at the beginning. Um, that many of the what m strongest objectors swung round and supported it as time went on, but that's the way of most science did. Thing is to stop burning coal and petroleum uh, altogether. Just stop it. Uh, we'll need certain amounts for for industrial things, but not but nothing like what we're doing at the moment. Uh, people have to get used to driving to pick up their goods and so on, and going on holiday with uh, cars that are electric. Uh, and I think the government is actually, in this country, preparing for such an eventuality. I think for, what is it, all uh, cars will have to be electric in about eight years, it's something like that. And uh, this is the right sort of move to make, and it'll help us all live longer, because there won't be any, anything like the amount of pollution if, if, if the cars are all electric. I think we should get our, personally think, we should get our electricity from nuclear. Uh, so many lies have been told about it. Uh, mostly, I think, propaganda from the uh, coal and oil burning industries uh, who just see it as a deadly rival. And uh, they, in practice, have A, sort of put the, <laughs> the skids under it by telling lies about its dangers and secondly um, by making nuclear power stations to make them allegedly safe so costly that, that they don't compete well those two things are quite wrong this country started nuclear energy in the world in uh, I think it was 1952 or sometime quite early on the Queen opened the uh, New, first nuclear power station at, uh, at Cold Hall in uh, Cumbria, I think, just about then. And it ran for years, it never killed anybody or hurt anybody. And that, as far as I know, still continues to do so. Um, it, it's just pure lies. Even when the Soviet uh, nuclear power station at Chernobyl um, more or less blew up in one section, it was, you know, thoroughly bad construction and engineering. I think the engineers were okay, but they were interfered with by bureaucrats almost continuously, and it just it went it just went wrong. But it did kill, I think, a few hundred people. It was a nasty accident, but it was nothing compared with many industrial accidents. Just about the same time, or a little before at a place called Bhopal in India. Thousands of people were killed. But it's a chemical industrial accident, but nobody sort of mentions that as a sounding name. And then the strangest of all, there was a, a big earthquake in the Pacific that led to a giant tsunami that hit the coast of Japan and uh, at a place called Fukushima. But nobody thinks of Fukushima as a, as a tsunami that killed 26,000 people. They think of it as a nuclear disaster. Actually, the number of people killed by nuclear energy at Fukushima was almost zero. Um, so, it's a, it's a, I don't want to dwell on this too long, but I, I think it's quite simple for us to get the energy we need from nuclear for quite a while. There's a lot of it around uh, the uh, of uranium and thorium, and uh, uh, we can use those and find out the best way of keeping the Earth in power as much as we need. The other thing we have to do is to consider the population. Uh, I'm afraid we probably have too many people in the world for the resources that it has to give, and that some sort must go into curbing population growth. I think it is. Governments realise the problem, but it's very difficult socially to do anything about it. Well, I don't have any secrets. I'll tell you what I know about it. Um, 
I, I think the answer, there's no simple answer. It's mainly, I think, the genes. I was lucky enough to get have a mother and father who had the right mixture of genes, and I was born with them. Um, there's no question that things like smoking uh, should have made me live live less long, but uh, I'm, maybe, I'm either very lucky or uh, because. My mother's family, who share m maybe the source of my genes, interestingly, there were five sisters in it, and uh, three of them uh, smoked and uh, died somewhere around about uh, just over the 80s. Uh, but, uh, and uh, two of them didn't smoke. One of them lived in New Zealand, admittedly, and they lived over a hundred. And so it looks as if you're losing uh, something in the order of uh, oh, five or six years from smoking. So I should have lost that, <laughs> but I didn't. And uh, I, I get like it walking very much. And uh, always as a child, I, wa I walked to school and to... Um, joined in rambles, as they were called in those days, across the country. Walked actually 42 miles one night across the countryside of Kent um, uh, in a school party. Um, and uh, we've done the whole coast path walk from Minehead to uh, Poole, which is about uh, 600 and something miles. Um, and we did that, I did it when I was 80, I said, and Sandy was somewhat younger. Then. Um, and then we continue, we, I do three, try to do three kilometres every day, nowadays. The other tip, I think, for not living, is not eat too much. Um, keep yourself slim if you can. Our astronomer royal, uh, Lord Martin Rees, uh, wrote a very good book a lot, some time ago called, uh, what was it? Uh, Our Final Century. Our Final Century, that's right. He, he raised, raised the point that maybe we won't even live beyond uh, the, the end of the next millennium. And... Uh, I think he, he, there's a lot of truth in what he says. Well, I mean, he was the expert on astronomer. He was our astronomer royal. Um, and uh, the, the problem is the sun, mainly. Uh, we do bad things that, that affect the climate, but we can't stop the sun warming up. It happens to be a nuclear reactor. And its properties are that it just goes on warming up from the moment it, it appeared. And that was a long time ago. Well, at first, it didn't give out enough heat. And the, the world was in danger of uh, freezing up solid. In fact, there is evidence that it did freeze solid several times. Um, but uh, as time went by, the sun warmed up and the things got stable. But now it's reaching a point where the output of heat from the sun is an embarrassment. It's, it's rather too much. And the Earth system, that I call Gaia, is uh, having to work extra hard to keep it cool. And that's where humans are interfering badly by doing things like uh, burning fossil fuel. You see, the way the world works in, in this thing is by pumping down carbon dioxide and other gases from the atmosphere and burying them. And if you want to know where it buried them, yeah, any of the chalk cliffs along the coast show you they're just one mass of shells of a thing, plant, a thing called coccolithophore uh, that, that just locks up the carbon as calcium carbonate in the rocks. And uh, we, of course, are proceeding to dig up another thing that the system buries, namely coal or oil, and uh, putting it back as CO2, which is starved. It's very difficult for them 
because the sources of news, the newspapers and uh, the radio and television and so on, I think are all to some extent influenced by the big money sources in the world, the oil companies and the coal burning people. That they don't want their businesses to be shut down naturally. And the people who've invested money in them for their pensions don't want them to, to die down. So there's an awful lot of selfish pressure on the inside from people who think they're quite legitimate, um, doing everything they can to kind of encourage the burning of fuel. It, it's all very difficult. I mean, I have a daughter who lived in, lives in Australia but she flew back to Britain, but it was a hell of a job getting here. She was in quarantine for two weeks when she did. Um, and uh, that is stopping an awful lot of fuel burning, but it can't go on. The, the, the public pressure will turn it off. So they've got to resist that. They've got to realise and understand what the Earth system is, and perhaps then... Uh, do their best in their lives. It's not unpleasant to uh, um, live right with the earth.